I'm going to be breaking down this motion tile effect that I saw in the MGK Troop Red video. I'm going to give you the sauce on how you can create your own rapid moving presets. I'll also be introducing my stock frame transition template that you can download right now, link in the description. Before I get started, if you get any valuable information out of today's video, be sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. Quick shout out as well to the names listed on the screen. These are website members. Just want to say how much I really appreciate you and keep an eye on your emails. You will be getting some free gifts here pretty soon. So right from the edit page, I'm going to right click and turn this to a new fusion clip. And then I'm going to go into fusion. Within fusion, I'm going to grab a background node, take the output of the background node and connect it to the media one. Is going to create a merge. I'll select the media one, then I'm going to go over to the inspector tab and the operator where it says over, I'm going to change it to in. Then I'll go back over to my merge one and hit control T or command T if you're on Mac. Now I'm going to select the background node and go up to my toolbar and grab a rectangle mask. It should automatically connect. Then using the on screen controls or using the height and width within the inspector tab, I'm going to resize the rectangle mask to fit around a subject's head, body, and basically wherever you want to. So I'm gonna move this up using controls, put it about right here. I'm gonna move this out because there's gonna be a lot more nodes than I'm gonna end up using. I'm gonna box select these nodes, hit control or command C, double click an empty space, hit control or command V. With this merge one dash one select, I'm gonna go to my toolbar and gonna grab a transform node. It should automatically connect. Then I take the output of that transform and connect it back to the merge one, which will create a merge two, and it should blank out the composition. Now I'm gonna move my media one up here because I'm actually gonna use this one media one to output to all the rest of the nodes I'm gonna create. And just for the sake of organization, I'm gonna hold alt on the keyboard and select this little line here. I'm gonna create this little elbow and just keep things organized. So now I'm gonna take the output of this media one and connect it to this merge one dash one. It'll bring back in the image. And then I'm gonna use the transform and select it Go to the inspector tab. I'm actually going to increase the size, increasing the size of the mask. Then to move the mask around, I'm going to use the rectangle mask. It has its own set of controls of our X and Y axis. I'm going to move it down and basically place it by right here. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger. And each time you increase the size, you don't have to, you'll have to reposition the mask. So leave that by right there. And then you want to repeat that process. So now I'm going to box select the transform, merge one dash one background, edit rectangle mask. Hit control C, control V, move this back down, take the output, create another merge. And then I'm gonna use the rectangle controls once again to reposition. I think I'll make this one a little bit bigger, but also make it narrow on the width, longer on the height. So now I'm gonna repeat that process until I'm done. So once again, I already got these selected and saved to the clipboard within my computer. So I'm just double clicking empty space, hit control V, take the output, connect back this, media one to the one dash two now. So here I'm actually gonna speed it up until I'm done with the composition. All right, so now I'm done. As you can see here, I took the media out and connected back to each one of these different mergers and then basically resize the mask. So the original effect in the video, each tile comes in one by one. It's a really easy way to do that without having to use actual keyframes. I'm gonna box select all my merge nodes Go here to keyframes. And if you see more than just the merge nodes, you want to make sure you click on the three dots and select only show selected tools. I'm gonna close that down now. And we're not going to set in extra keyframes, but we're going to use this as keyframes. This basically just shows how long your media is being displayed within the composition. Altering this allows Fusion, basically gives Fusion to understand that, hey, you don't want this, this particular media or content or whatever not displayed during that time. So I'm going to move this back about three frames, but two, three frames. And then the rest of them do probably like four frames. And then something do, I put it at six. So then every four frames, another tile will come in. So I'm gonna go from here to 10, and then push this back to 33. Now as it plays, if you move your playhead up and down, your first tile will already be displayed and then they just come in every so many frames. And of course the amount of frames don't matter. You can change it how you want to. If you want to come in faster, just increase the time on them. Now do be mindful of this too. Some I've seen this effect used too on white backgrounds. If you wanted to, you can grab a background node, take the output of it and connect it to the merge. I'm gonna merge eight, select that background and then turn it white. Then select the merge nine, hit control T. It'll put it in the background of your composition. And then you also might wanna add a drop shadow. So we can go select the first background node, hit control space. Type in drop. Go through now and just kind of change settings around. Can't really see my drop shadow because my 
my tiles are too close. So if I go through and move them around, see, I'm gonna click this one and move it over and go back to my very first one, and move it up a little bit. Now you can see a bit of the drop shadow there. Once you get your settings set for how you want the drop shadow to look, you can hit control C on the drop shadow note and then select your transform node in each one of the compositions and hit control V. And that way it'll paste it with the exact same settings. So now you have this little drop shadow, kind of give you more depth. And of course you don't actually need to use the white background for that. You can see your drop shadow disconnect the background node. If you do do that, you're gonna select the merge and hit control T to change back out the outputs or the inputs, I'm sorry. And then you'll still see the drop shadow. So now if I go back to the edit page, I'm gonna grab another piece of media. So I'm gonna delete that and then put this over top. Actually, I'm gonna let it render first. So now playing it back. Now you can use it as a transition, kind of like what I did there, or you can just use it as an effect, however you wanna use it. I released the Rapid Moving Preset Pack. It's basically a bunch of generators that you can use to create these small, like really quick transitions, just to kind of add motion and energy to your to your edits. There's a free demo available as well. Link will be in the description. But right now I'm gonna give you the sauce and at least giving you the stepping stones for creating your own. However, if you don't feel like being bothered with the process, you can get the full pack at my website. Okay, and just a clip and I want it to be 10 frames. So I'm gonna hit control D. I'm gonna select 10, hit change. Then I'm gonna place my arrow, I'm gonna place my playhead right here in between the two clips and I'm gonna hit the arrow keys to go over five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So now I have five frames on each side of this clip. I'm gonna open this in Fusion. So you go into Fusion, your adjustment clip should have your 10 frames. I'm gonna select my media one, go to the toolbar and select a transform. With the transform selected, I'm gonna go over into the inspector tab and we're gonna go under size, right click, I'm gonna select modify width, atom curves. Go over to the modifiers now. On the source, we're gonna change this to custom. On the scale, double click and type this, and change it to one. And then we're gonna set keyframes. So now if I go over here to the first, oh, actually we're on the offset too, we're gonna set it for one. There you go, that brings back the subject. It was actually zoomed way out. So now I go back over here to custom. I'm gonna set a keyframe on the input. I'm gonna go four frames in. And then I'm just gonna scale this up ever so slightly. You don't wanna go too far. So basically just find what point you want to set it and leave it at that point. So now it's gonna create this little quick zoom in. Then go down here to mirror, select that. And what this is gonna do is no matter what length make the adjustment clip, it's gonna automatically scale back. So it's gonna go zoom in, it's gonna stay zoomed in on your next clip rather. And then when you go to the last frame, it's only gonna show you frame nine, but by frame 10, it's gonna go back to the, the original size. So now if I go back to the edit page, let quick this quick zoom and then go back to the original side. And of course it looks crappy right now, but we're gonna fix all that. But first of all, you wanna go up to spline tab, select transform, select the zoom to fit, go down here and select all your frames, hit S to smooth, if you hit, T, it's gonna bring up the ease in controls. You can use it to ease in and ease out your subject. I probably do the ease in, but it's around like probably about 50. And then the ease out, I probably do like 45. Got right there. Now, usually I would use motion blur. And you can use motion blur here if you want to, just to save on computer power. When I designed the rapid movement preset pack, you can see down here, these are actually some of the original nodes. I, I copy and paste them down here just so I can remember the settings or copy the settings, which if you go back to the edit page and grab one of my rapid moving presets. You can click on it, go up here to the fusion icon, double click the group. The nodes are all there. If you right click the group and then ungroup, all the nodes are there. You can go through and look at the different settings and everything that I use to create the presets. I try to leave everything open just in case you guys want to like reverse engineer the nodes. So back in my composition, instead of using motion blur, hit control and space and I use directional blur. There you go. I'm gonna hold shift and add it to my node flow. So with the directional blur selected and go over to the inspector tab under the length, I'm gonna right click, modify width, atom curves, then go to modifiers. You're basically gonna repeat the same process. You're gonna change source to custom, the scale and offset you can leave as it is. Yeah. So then we'll go back to the first frame of the composition, set a keyframe. I'm gonna go about to frame four once again and then scale this up to correct blur. And then once again, I'm gonna select mirror which is going to allow the blur to come in and go so you can get to here you'll see it's going back to normal once again you're going to go into spline and select your spline and hit s to smooth the easing is not really necessary so i'm going to close that back down i'm also hit mirror this basically gives you like a pseudo motion blur and there's a lot less taxing on your computer so then the last thing we're gonna grab is select the directional blur node and grab a brightness contrast node and we're basically going to use the exact same settings we're going to right click on game modify width Adam curves, we'll go to the modifiers, change it to custom. Here you can leave the scale at five if you want to. I'm gonna change the offset to one. So right here, you're gonna change this to one. Hit enter, that should bring back the image. And we're gonna set the exact same keyframe on zero. Go to four, 
you know, turn up the brightness to however you see fit. But right there is good enough. And then click the mirror. So now it's gonna flash real quick. So, so now your composition will zoom in, you get this zoom in, get the blur, and then you get the quick brightness flash. If you wanna zoom in further and go back to the transform, click on modifiers, you can turn up the scale. It zoom in even further. Now 10 frames will look too long, but you actually can see how kind of how linear the transition is. So if we go back to the edit page, you probably want to drop this down to about eight frames or maybe six frames so he control D. I'm gonna type in six frames, change, place it back in between. As you can see here, it's actually jumping from, it's snapping, so it, it won't let me place it in between. You go up here to this little magnetic icon and turn off snapping or keyboard shortcut is in, and then you can place it whatever you want to. So I'm gonna place it about right there. So anywhere from about four to six, maybe eight frames, is the good is basically the sweet spot where you want to create these little transitions. And then you can go to media pool, go to power bins. If you don't have power bins activated, go over here to this little three dot icon and select show power bins. You can then select this, go to file over here, give it a name. So I'm just double click this and just type in like flash or zoom flash. Once you click off, you'll see the name of a change. Go into your power bin, you can just place the adjustment clip there. And then anytime you want to add like a quick little flash transition or something like that in between, you just go back to your power bins and drop it on your clip. Of course, the power bins carry over from every project. So you can place it in between two clips, like say for instance here, right before the, the money stop dropping, split the clip, go right here where the money is pretty much all over him, split that clip, close the gap, and then move this in between the two clips. And more or less following this process is how I created the rapid movement preset pack. All right, so this here is my stock frame transition pack. I actually recreated this pack three different times. Technical errors, bunch of other bull, not gonna get into that. But it's my attempt to recreate this film frame transition that I got a lot of requests to recreate for DaVinci Resolve that was originally for Premiere Pro. So this pack will only work on 18.6.6 of DaVinci Resolve or higher, which is the latest version before 19. So if you're interested in getting the pack, you'll have to upgrade to the latest version of DaVinci before 19. And that's the only way you can be able to use it, unfortunately. So once your download is complete and you extract it, you have four downloads. You have the PNG files, which is basically just the image itself with a transparent background. You have the PSD files. Is if you want to, you can upload them to Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any photo editor that recognizes PD, PDSD files. And you can then edit them from there and manipulate them however you want to. You have the sound effects, and then you have the transition template itself. So now to install the template, you're going to go to the little house icon, which is the project library. You're going to right click and then select restore project archive. You'll navigate to wherever on your system you download the template, which the template itself is the stock frame transition. Click on it, select open. Give it a second, it'll create a new project on your system. Double click on that project to open it up. Now, unfortunately, you can't put this in the power bin. For some odd reason, you can't put timelines or anything like that in the power bin. So what we're gonna do is select this, hit control C and go back to our previous project. Then go up here to where it says master, click on it and hit control V. That's gonna paste the transition template within our current project. And so if you click on stock frame transition, you have three folders, you have the edit folder, you double click it, it has all the different transitions. Go to final, which is the final timeline for the transitions. And if you go to other, it's basically the folder you just really don't need to touch. If you mess with these fusion clips, you throw off, the whole entire effect. And this is just a placeholder image. And these are the stock frames themselves. So now the user pack can go back up here to final and you double click on one of them. It's basically gonna open up, open it up in your timeline. And then you can kind of preview it from there. If it's kind of laggy and glitchy, basically you wanna let it render. If you don't have render on, go up to playback, render cache. Mine's set to smart. I'm actually gonna change it to user. With the render cache now, you'll see the effect come in. One of my favorite ones is number eight. So it open it up on the timeline, give it a second to render. And you play. So now that it's rendered, you get an idea of what it looks like. So what I'm going to do now, since I want to use transition eight, I'm going to go into the edit folder, go to transition eight, and I basically want to replace these shots. Now, I don't have anything in here right now. I can hit control I, and I'm just going to select some of this stock footage, then hit open. Basically, I'm going to open it up in there. And basically, what I'm going to do is open up each one of these. These are, these are different timelines. You basically open up each timeline by double clicking on it and then just place your footage or your image. So I'm going to place this here and I leave it as the freeze frame. So I'm going to click on this and hit shift R and it's basically going to create a freeze frame of this entire clip wherever my playhead is. In this particular situation, the video is kind of cut off at the top and bottom. So I'll get rid of this yellow background from the placeholder. I'm just going to click on the placeholder and hit D to disable. Then I'm going to go to shot two and basically repeat that process. So drop this down here and use that frame there, hit shift R. And once again, same thing, just hit D to disable. Now you can leave these as videos, 
I'm just using the still images. So once again, hit shift R and this one here, it doesn't cut off because it actually fills up the top and bottom. So I can just leave it as it is. So now that I have all my shots placed, I'm gonna go back to the final folder and I'm gonna click on transition eight, double click it to open up in timeline and I'm gonna let it render. So now it's rendered, play it back. You see all my images are placed and now how to get this to your project timeline. My original project timeline is timeline 10 and just go up here now to my final photo, grab this transition, bring it in. I'm just gonna make a cut between two different frames. I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline so I can see it better. So now I have a place in between these two clips and just hit play. It's gonna play back the animation along with all the sound effects and everything. If you wanna go through and alter or edit anything, you can just right click and select open on timeline. And from here, you can use this little drop down here to turn on the transform controls, select the different fusion clips and just move them around how you see fit. If you don't wanna use all of them, you can just hit D to disable. So say for instance, you only want three, yeah, those three come in. You can disable the different sound effects. You can use the transform tools right from the inspector tab to increase the size and, whoa, whoa don't wanna do that. I'm gonna relink this and increase the size and everything you wanna do. Now, if you wanna reposition your media, like if your media is too big, too small, or anything like that, select the fusion clip, right click, and then open in fusion. I'm gonna close this keyframes and spline and stuff down. And within the fusion, for each fusion clip, I have a note letting you know what does what. So use this transform node to reposition your media. So you click on it and you increase the size or decrease the size or move around however you want to to get the composition, to get it to fit the composition. This here controls the drop shadow. So if you want more drop shadow or less, you can control it from there. And this node here actually just controls the position of this, which moving it here will actually cause problems on the edit page. So if I move it here, say for instance, and I move it around on the edit page, it's gonna be cut off because it's cut off on within Fusion. So then if I go back in Fusion and double click this to reset it, if you wanna move it around, it's just best to use the on-screen transform controls or the position X and Y controls on the edit page. Something that you can do too, if you want to like create like a hold effect or something like that, you can click on the Fusion clip and hit right click, create a new compound clip. From there, you can click on the clip and hit Control R, stretch it out if you want to. So say for instance, the animation comes in, it's gonna hit Control Z. Right after the animation comes in, which is only a couple of frames, if you want to, I'm gonna hold Alt and scroll the mouse wheel. You can hit this little drop down arrow and add a speed point. Then hit this drop down arrow again, turn it into a freeze frame. It'll animate in, it'll hold for the duration that you want it to. And then the rest of the animation play out as it continues on. So you can use this in a number of different ways. This is why I actually wanted to make it a template. It gives you a lot more control. You can customize it from the edit page without being so taxing on your computer from the from you making it a preset and also it, it has all the sound effects, everything built in for you. And you just basically just drag and drop it if you want to. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for future content, and I'll see you in the next video.